Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how we can create this Olympics logo. The reason why I chose the Olympics logo is because it has a very, very, it feels very, very easy to create. It looks like a couple of rings, circles, but if you look at it, you can see there's a little bit of intricacy going on with the logo. Uh, the, the rings are interlocking, so you can see right here the yellow goes on top and then here it goes under, right? So that is uh, basically how the logo intertwines with um, the circles or the rings intertwine with each other. That's like the main thing we are trying to create right here. So we're going to be doing that. Um, shout out to other designers that have been designing custom logos and explaining the processes behind it. But I feel like some of these popular logos too are really, really easy ways that you can ease into the whole uh, graphic design process on journey so let's start open your core draw your document and then bring it go to the folder where you have your olympics you can download it online and just drop it here the default olympics logo and you can reduce the size it's already a png so you can see it has no background now when you're trying to create a logo like this the first thing you want to do is you want to just analyze or you want to um, look at the logo and tell yourself okay this is the component or composition of this logo and for this one, it's quite easy to see that it's made up of circles, right? So the first thing we'll do is to bring our circle, create a circle, hold control to make it perfect, just one circle. And we are going to duplicate the circle. We're going to make a copy of it. So I'll just do control C and control V to paste it. And then I'll shrink the one I've pasted. I'll hold shift and I'll grab one of the handles and pull it inside. And there I'm going to have two circles. So we can group these two circles as a unit. And then we duplicate this one and bring it to the side like so uh, we could shift it a little bit so it's, it's closer a bit and then do another duplicate while it's still selected to so maintain the spacing and then we'll select all three of them and do press b or we could go to object go to align and distribute and just align them to the bottom or the top it will still be the same thing because uh they pretty much have the same size so if you align them to the bottom or the top they will just be the same right those they will line up on the same edge so the next thing is to generate two more of these uh, circles so we're just going to select the first two and do a duplicate of it and then group it as well you know and just bring it down and we are going to center this on this one in the center because this circle in the middle is kind of like center to every other thing else here so we'll select this one we've created and hold shift select this ones and press c to center horizontally or you can still find it under objects, align and distribute and say align center horizontally. So that's C. You're aligning from left to right. And the next thing we want to do is we want to line up these circles at the base to start from somewhere around the middle of this one. So how do we get the middle of these uh, three circles at the top? We simply draw a shape. Now we can enlist a line. We can just use a line to draw that shape. But if we do a line and align it, we might not necessarily hit this uh these circles might not necessarily hit the center so instead of using a line i'm going to introduce a box and this is what i'll, I'll do with the box i'll make sure that my snap two options are you know you can check everything there and then um i'll just come i'll just come to my uh, my logo here and try to create a box that is exactly the size of the circle so make sure it touches from one edge to the other edge and or even if it doesn't touch you can stretch it like this and then stretch it down till it touches the edge sees edge here good so this is the size of um, shape we want to create at the center here so you could stretch it out and then align it so if you select this you could do hold shift select one of the circles here and press e to align it vertically centered right so right now we have this shape vertically centered if we select this logo I'm oh, sorry, if we select the two circles at the base here, we can hold shift, select this and align it to the top, see, and then it stays. So right now, these circles are centered to this document. Now, if I delete this one and uh, let me try to explain, let me try to explain what I meant by if we use a line, we might not achieve the same result. So I'll do control D with everything and just pull this here. It's just a side thing, but let's just understand what I'm trying to say. So if I delete this. If I create just a single line by using like the freehand tool and clicking somewhere, hold my shift, just drag it and hold shift and then click somewhere out here. And then I'm align it to this, I'll hold shift, select this and press E. So you can see right now that pressing E, if I select these logos at these circles at the base and I hold shift and select this and I align to the top, you notice that it lines up at the top. So it definitely shifts down, right? And because of that, it's not actually aligned at the center 
the outer circle is aligned at the center, but the inner circle is not also factored in, it's not considered. So because of that, we're not getting something really perfect as to where the shape is, um, the circles aligning. But for this one, since we've generated just about enough, um, the shape with enough width, now if we align it to the center, you can now see that both inner and outer circles are actually touching the edges of this box which actually indicates that we have a perfectly centered object which factors in the second circle inside right so that is the reason why I created a shape that was exactly the size the length of the space between the inner and outer circles I hope this makes sense so let's move back to what we're doing so now you could delete this you don't need it anymore and um, we've basically generated our logo. The next thing is to start generating the areas that have the different colors. So for us to get the different colors, I just want to create five boxes here. Let's just create one and do duplicate. And just duplicate into five. And then I'll use my color eyedropper tool and pick out all the colors and apply them here. Just, um, you could go to your properties bar to switch back to select color, pick the black, apply, or you could do space bar twice. That's easier. Pick the color, apply, space bar twice. Pick the color, apply. What the space bar does is it cycles between the previously used tool and your sh your pick tool. So anytime you hit it, it goes to pick two. If you hit it again, it switches back to the eyedropper. So we have these five colors. We can remove the outline so we don't mistake picking up the outline rather than the color. So the next one we'll do is to start generating the areas where the colors are going to be applied. Now there's a very simple tool we can introduce here and that tool is called the Smart Field tool. The Smart Field tool, you can find it directly on your, on your tools box, directly under the interactive field tool so if you open that interactive field tool, you're going to find the smart field tool there so when you grab the smart field tool what it says is what it does is it will create objects from overlapping areas and apply a field to those objects so what this means is anywhere that there is there are objects overlapping and lines crossing into each other and there are boundaries it's going to create or generate a new shape for you so if you look at this area where we have these circles crossing into each other you can see that there are boundaries because of the word overlaps right the objects are crossing into each other so there are boundaries all around so for example if i want to generate from here to this end here all i have to do is click inside of that boundary and it will generate a shape for me so you see generate that shape for me right using a feel and an outline that you've predetermined so in this case i want to predetermine my feel and outline using these colors that we have here so the first thing i'm going to do is switch to my smart feel and then go to the properties bar there where you can see the fill options where you can specify we are using specify so which means you can select your colors and the outline that you can also specify if you don't want an outline you specify that you don't want you can say no outline if you want it you can leave it so let's just leave the outlines for now so right now let's specify the fill so select the fill use your eyedropper and yeah it's blocking out some colors there so let's just escape Let's move out this color. Let's move these colors out somewhere we can see them. So let's go back again. So space bar, speak this, and then go for the colors and specify blue. And just click outside and then come here and notice that the blue went on the top here and went under here. So we have to start from where it went on the top here. Generate that small area, generate this other area, generate this area. We are only leaving out this area so you can see that place is empty so the next color we are going for is yellow so we'll go back to the smart field we'll pick the eyedropper let's pick yellow and then we'll use yellow to generate so we'll start from here we we'll generate here for yellow we'll generate here uh we we'll skip this place we we'll generate this outer area i think we have to generate the top area here too we'll generate here we'll generate here and we we'll leave this empty space here the next color we go for is black right so we have we pick out the color black and just as we did again we generate here we generate this this place here we generate here we don't generate here we generate here and here as well and then here right and uh, what else do we generate i think that's that's that for the black and then the next color we go for is we go for the green so we pick the green and with the green we we'll have to generate all these areas and jump this place the black is already there so we we'll generate here 
here, here. We have to jump this place, generate here, generate here, and generate here. So the rest of the places we have to generate is red. So we go back there and uh, pick a color, pick red, and we generate with the red, we generate, we go here, we go here, we go here. We have to go on top here, but I think, uh, okay, yeah, so we go here. And then we leave that other empty space. So I think with this, we've generated all the colors. So the next thing we want to do is to start banding them together. So you, let's start with the blue. We select this one, hold shift. We select this, select this one as well. And we weld. We go to the properties bar and we look for the weld options, which combines all the objects into a single object. So we do that and it welds everything. So if we pull it out, we're going to have something like this, right? And then we select the yellow, hold shift, select this, select this, make sure you pick out everything, select this, select this, and select this, and we weld as well. We select the black, hold shift, we select this, select this, select this, select this, select this, and we weld. Pull it out to make sure that we selected everything, and that's cool. For the green, we hold this, Select this, select this, select this, this, and this one, and we weld pull it out. Yeah, and then the red, we select this, hold shift, select this, select this, and this. Okay, pull it out. That's it. So let's now pull out everything we've generated. Select this, hold shift, select this other one, the black. The green and the red and pull them all out i'm gonna have them all like rings locking into each other we can remove their outline and there we have the logo you can see the red you can see the yellow going on top and going under here actually not there but you know and then going on top here and going under and we have the black going under coming on top going under coming on top we have the blue going on top and going under here we have the green going on top and going under going on top and going under we have the red going under and coming on top and that is how you generate the olympics logo you can just group this whole thing and you're done so that's it if you have if you found this um helpful you could leave a thumbs up and drop a comment as well and if you have any let's say popular logo redesign you'd like me to attempt you could also say that in the comments